brothers welcome back to dummy nation now if you've been keeping track of this game it has been through some highs and lows the recruitment screen was very unpopular i'm here to deliver great news that's been revamped in a much more simple and fun way so we're going to go through that and also the new research options that are available now if you're brand new to the game i highly recommend checking out my previous dummy nation video that'll explain all the basic mechanics today's just going to be about research and recruitment so for this example, I'm going to be using Taiwan because it's a great example of a country that has a very good GDP, but not a very good population. Those things matter a lot more when we're talking about recruitment. Now, uh, the recruitment tab is back to where it was. It's a lot simpler in terms of, you know, you want this unit, you buy this unit, so forth. Now, the big thing comes into mind where you start talking about percentage of population available. That's where population matters, is that we can't just spam out commandos and do things like that anymore because if we don't have the manpower to do so we you don't have the troops to recruit so for a country like taiwan there's really no point in buying commandos because you really don't have any if we click here you can see that this is our total percentage of available population to recruit let's recruit one unit that goes down to 26 but we can only recruit a couple of these it's much more efficient for a country like taiwan to be buying into tanks and rocket artillery helicopters which are new combat aircraft which is not and then drones and killer robots which are brand new, but in the recruitment tree, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Now with the new version, you can play this and keep on this screen forever. However, there is the production screen in the background. Now, just to kind of explain a few of these things over here, this is what you're currently producing and this is what you will be producing based off these green sliders. The red sliders are dismantling units that takes them out of your military if you're over budget. Personally, I'd rather just invade somebody than never use that, but it is available to you. So let's say we were to use the unit of commandos well then you can see these numbers over here have shifted so this is saying how much of your current recruiting capacity are you using so 25 percent so for example if i want to bring up gunners and then tanks this will as this goes up to 100 will draw down these other two now the second line here is the percentage of your budget that you're currently spending so you can see that we're currently spending 326k on this which is over the amount of money that we're making 156 so we need to bring that in line with something we could actually afford even less. And now what is the kind of the optimal for this? Well, personally, what I have found works best is to not recruit any kind of tanks, rocket artillery, helicopters, or combat aircraft, and rather buy those in bulk orders. Now, what I like to do is get us some reservists, some commandos, and some gunners out there around 30 to about 40%, ideally later in the game, what you're going to do is you're going to have these guys up to about 33 percent each somewhere in that neighborhood but this budget needs to be again at 30 to 40 percent maximum for you to be able to do that and you need to have the population to be able to continue that now while we are buying units the production will be paused so these all any of these units will be paused until you get through the queue down here now to talk about the new units in the game we have helicopters we have drones and we have killer robots drones and killer robots are unlocked in the game later on so the helicopter is somewhat of a mix between uh rocket artillery and a tank you can see the tanks individual stats here is it has a 1.1k attack power 2.5k armor and 500 attack the helicopter on the other hand has very little attack but great piercing a little bit of okay armor especially when you start comparing it to the rocket artillery the rocket artillery is pretty similar in armor but you can see the big difference is the uh, piercing damage that goes through is the best in the class. It definitely is great at disrupting enemy lines. Now, compared to the aircraft, the aircraft has a lot more armor and attack power and everything else along that lines. You can see it does a lot more damage, but it's a very expensive unit. Now, drones are super great. Think of them as incredibly cheap, cheap, cheap rocket artillery. You can see that their stats are nothing impressive, but you can buy a lot of them for very cheap or if we bought an entire 1.63 of rockets that would cost us 900k tank uh, a unit of drones would cost us 500k for 99 so it is a pretty good deal they're, they're great at attack power and stuff like that especially if you're fighting an army that has a lot of armored units on the field now killer robots are great they're just basically like combat aircraft but on the ground you can see their stats are 500 110 where our regular commando is 15, five and four. Now these guys are a lot more expensive, so they're great supplemental units, but it would be pretty hard to have your entire army like that. It could be good for a country like Taiwan, who's locked with population and needs ground troops, but can't really afford them. 
it is a little bit debatable of their usefulness but that is kind of the new ground units and how to use them now when we start diving into the research it's split into the same three trees we're used to where we have military economic and social research but these have all been very buffed out so let's talk about the new ones here first off you can see that we've gone into a level of robotics we've unlocked the first level of drones second level unlocked the killer robots so those are two units that can be used pretty well they're a lot of fun to use i use drones a lot killer robots i haven't really been sold on but drones absolutely and we'll just talk about the new research tabs these ones have been here combat training for infantry units reactive armor for your armored units conscription is new though which increases the percentage of population available for recruitment by up to 500 percent which is great for a small country that has a lot of money but maybe not as much ground units now ground units will cost more for a country that has a high gdp per capita aka lower to one versus a country that like if we look at let's take a look at uh myanmar over here their GDP per capita is 171, so it'd be much cheaper for them to recruit and maintain military ground units. So conscription can be useful. I haven't really used it too much in my playthroughs, but it is an option available. National Guard is great, cutting down the maintenance of all your troops by up to 30%. Maintenance can be very expensive. Now, the military spending has been kind of revamped where this was a little bit of your effectiveness, but now it is how much attrition you are taking. So you can see that we're taking negative 6.1% of our total army over time we can bring this up to lower it but ultimately the best way to lower this number is to attack somebody in my opinion now as you get later in the game you can afford this and you're really wanting to ramp up for a big attack let's say on the united states and you don't want to be taking those losses then you can really break this number up now that is where the production tab comes into a great effect because you could be recruiting reservists commandos and gunners and then bulk buying everything else along those lines military police also cuts this down it cuts down the military assets and equipment lost over time not in combat so this is another great way to cut down on this number it is something that i use pretty frequently i think it's pretty great and it's it's been a lot of fun to use it so i do recommend using that one moving along military intelligence increases the amount of experience your troops gain after battles by up to 50 percent so to kind of break this down you go into bonuses and there's a bunch of new things here first off morale if you're winning a bunch of battles, your troops are going to fight better because they have a lot better morale. Combat experience will also go up. Now, international standing is still in the game, but it has been heavily nerfed. So feel free to attack countries as long as you're not just chain attacking everyone. It shouldn't be that big of a problem. The only problem you might come up with is if you're chain attacking everyone that you have in sight is ammunition shortage. This just encourages you to take a little bit of a break. This was another thing that has been nerfed in the update, so it's not as much of a problem, but will affect your overall piercing and firepower damage so you, once this starts to go up you just take a break let that come back down and then there's guerrilla warfare which strengthens the skill of your troops when defending your territory by a foreign invader by up to 20 percent personally don't really use this if i'm getting invaded i've already done something pretty bad already i think the best defense is a good offense so i don't really use utilize this i do go very heavily into art of war though reduce the time it takes for your troops to count conquered enemy territory by up to 100 percent this can really go buck wild, especially when you start investing heavily in this. You can do a lot of damage. Now, no matter what tree you go down, I highly encourage you to put at least two to three levels into whatever the research discount before you start going down all this because it really makes a difference. Now, war tactics have been in the game and so have nuclear weapons. So we'll kind of leave those for now and we'll go on to the economic research. Now, the economic research, we have self-sufficient economy and digital economy. And by the way, this 0% here means that you can only recruit a certain amount in each section. So uh, if I wanted to max out self-sufficient economy, then I could not put any points into digital economy. So they're mutually exclusive. Now, this one, financial micromanagement, is great for small countries to kind of get a little bit extra out of their economy. But personally, I still recommend using self-sufficient economy. I think it's the buffs are better. And at the end of the day, if you're playing the game well enough, financial micromanagement is not going to help you out that much because you're going to be invading and you're going to quickly become a big country. And then this is this is going to be all kind of for naught. Remittance, we know. Smart taxation, we know. Welfare state, we know. Now, military logistics minimizes the, lo the loss of attack power of your troops in intense battles due to ammunition shortage. So this just kind of cuts down the ammunition shortage. It's really not that big of a deal. Typically, you're going to need to take breaks anyways. You're never just going to be stack chaining attacks all the way through but could be helpful if you're trying to do that strategy. And then there's the arms industry. Allows training up to 10% of a different troop in parallel without affecting the shared maximum training capacity. So if we go back to our training tab over here in the production tab, 
when we were talking about 30%, 30%, and then this, this basically gives an extra 10%. So that could be helpful. Personally, I haven't invested too much in it. I, if I go anywhere down the economic tree, I definitely very heavily invest in Sovereign Wealth Fund. This invests surplus liquidity sitting in your treasury and to risk your financial investments, increasing your exposure to the markets, therefore yields losses by up to 100%. So basically the money that you have sitting here gets reinvested into here. And as long as the, the world economy is going okay, that really buffs up the money you're making. And it can really be a game changer, especially at the late game. It's 100% definitely, definitely worth it. Now, war economy and economic stimulus, we know. So we're gonna go ahead and skip those as well and go straight down to social research. Now in social research, we have international aid, moral high ground, blind nationalism, which we know, but then there's multiculturalism, which is okay. Lowers the risk of forming militias in, in opposition to your forces by up to 50%. Personally, don't really use this very much. If, you're, you, if your ideology is democracy and you're attacking a non-democracy, you can use Liberator. If you're an autocracy, you can use martial law. But if you're playing as communism or fascism, that might be a little bit helpful, but I think you can use your research points elsewhere for a little bit better of a buff. Now, prestige is really great. Cultivate a reputable public perception that passively improves your international standing over time. So as we talked about, when you start invading too many countries, your international standing will go down. This will naturally bring it back up at a much higher rate than it would naturally on its own. So this is actually pretty good. And I do, if you're going to go down prestige, pairing this with international aid and moral high ground is a great way to get you into a good exchange rate because you'll be making allies hands over fist. Now, next up is propaganda bolsters the impact of your morale, which we talked about earlier. Morale is a great one. Don't really use this one a lot. I think there's better ways to use, to invest in this. And then there's cultural assimilation increases the odds that countries will give up territory claims on your land by up to 500%. Don't really have a lot of problems with this because I'll just conquer the country. So I don't think this one is too much of a benefit, but here's the real big one in the social tree. Innovative spirit increases research points you produce by up to 100%. This is absolutely amazing. You can pair this very well with going it going down this tree rushing down to here and then going back into like military or social economical so each one of these trees really has a killer perk so each one of them is very viable it doesn't matter which one you pick all of them have great buffs and i think that's a great place for the game to be balanced at so that's kind of the the quick breakdown of how the new recruitment screen and the research is looking right now the game is in a great spot if you haven't been playing it for a while i highly recommend jumping back into it and giving it another shot and if you did leave a negative re review of the game on steam i highly encourage you to play the game and if your mind has changed to revisit that review because at the end of the day this is a small indie developer we made our point clear he reversed a lot of the changes and to his credit deserves a little bit of love so <laughs> With that being said, uh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made this far in the video. If you have made this far in the video, make sure to leave a like. And uh, if you're new around here, subscribe for more. I put up videos every day. And if I did leave anything out that you feel like is important for the people to know, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. But for now, boys, I'll see you in the next one.